the Nikon D800 in 2018, I'm going to give you three reasons why I think this camera should be your very first full frame DSLR. Reason number one is the price. Now we're all on a budget of some sort and we're all trying to find the best tool for the, our dollar. Now the Nikon D800 on the used market on eBay in particular is starting to approach $800. Now, you know, that's a kind of a range. There's kind of a range from $750 to uh, $950. However, there are many good deals out there and you can probably snag one for yourself around the $800 mark. And now if you consider that against the Nikon D850, which is coming in new, brand new at like $3,300, you can probably buy four of these for the price of one D850. Uh, furthermore, it's actually probably more going to be like one Nikon D800, a lens or two or three, um, depending on which kinds you want. And you can have yourself a fully outfitted DSLR for use. First introduced back in 2012, the Nikon D800 is now starting to approach six years old. Now in terms of consumer technology, six years is a long time. Now you probably won't be able to find many people using a six year old smartphone, but what about cameras? Well, in this case, the Nikon D800 has aged very well. Uh, which brings me to point number two, in that you're not buying an obsolete piece of technology. The Nikon D800 rocks 36 megapixel sensor, which many cameras released within the last few months still don't compete with and that's huge for this camera uh, because those megapixels they allow for some flexibility within your post processing furthermore even though the nikon uses a rather aging cf card it's still supported today as say like canon's 5d mark IV still uses it so we can at least expect these things to stay stick around for a few more years and lastly the autofocus here is still very competent now compared to many entry full frame DSLRs, they still can't touch the D800 in terms of autofocus. Now if you compare it to some things like the, say the new D850 or D500, the D800's autofocus is pretty lacking. However, when you compare it to things like, you know, say a Nikon D610 or maybe the Canon 5D Mark II, this thing should still beat them in there in regards to autofocus. Now please pardon the messy desk here, but I wanted to demonstrate point number three here, which is Nikon's great selection of lenses, whether it's from Nikon itself, it's like this 24 to 70, or from a third party manufacturer like Tamron's 15 to 30 millimeter here, you're not sure on any kind of choice for the D800. And that's great because, well, even though good sound advice would be to choose a lens first and then pick a body afterward, sometimes as a first time buyer into a camera, well, it's pretty difficult to uh, ascertain which kind of focal length you want. So if there's a lens you want, like say this Nikon 200 to 500 for some basic wildlife, or maybe Tamron 70 to 200 VC for some general purpose shooting and portraits, or maybe you just want something as simple as a 50 millimeter f1.4 prime. It's all there for you. To add on top of the great lens selection, uh, third party manufacturers like Tamron Sigma make good lenses that come at competitive price points. Now, for example, this Tamron 70 200 here, I bought for only $500. That's right, $500. So it, it may take you a little bit of hunting on Craigslist and eBay, but the deals are out there. So you can fully outfit yourself a D800 and a few lenses on a budget. While the Nikon D800 might be my choice of camera to buy second hand, you can always buy something else. What I really want you to get from this video is that you don't have to spend top dollar to get really good equipment. Now, for the sake of keeping the video length short, this doesn't have all my thoughts about the D800. You can read more on my blog, link down below in the description, and some other thoughts added on to that. And I'm really terrible about closing out videos, so see you later.